Welcome into Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. I'm Megan Payton. Guys, do you want a free Seahawks jersey? If you are new to this channel, this might come as a surprise to you, but we've got a great deal going on. We're going to tell you about this later in the video, but if you want a free Seahawks jersey, go to the comments right now and type free. We are talking NFL draft prospects. Now, it might seem a little early to be talking about a draft that's in April while we're at, what, week 10, we going into week 11 of the NFL season, but I don't think it's ever too early to start looking at some prospects. And I want to say this as a disclaimer right now, this video is not being created because of the Seahawks record. We are doing this all around chat sports for lots of different teams. So do not get me in the comments right now saying we are talking about draft because of the Seahawks record. All right, moving on. We're talking about what the Seattle Seahawks currently need. What are the team's biggest needs? And to me, offensive line, I mean, name, name a place in the offensive line. I think that is an area that needs to be improved. It was a problem last year. It's been a problem. I still think we need more guys in that in that area i think cornerback we're finally getting it to a good place with dj reed and trey brown but still i'm not going to put it off the table because i think that we could you know find a great cornerback draft him i like that idea now an edge rusher i think that would be helpful for seattle though they are improving in defense as a whole i think that there's a lot of good prospects out there this year so i'm keeping that on the list for seattle and lastly you guys might not agree with this one based on how it turned out with rashad penny but i say running back is somewhat of a need for the seahawks just because we don't know what chris carson is going to look like we don't know if he's even going to be back in seattle we don't know how that neck injury is going to be alex collins is good but i think he's really just a very good running back too i think we still need a number one guy so these are my top seahawks needs right now but you guys might disagree with me and that is okay that's why i'm asking you right now what is the biggest need for Seattle in the 2022 NFL Draft. This is our pinned comment. So if you get the ad break right here, go scroll on down and get your votes in. So moving on to what do the Seattle Seahawks actually have in draft picks? Right now, I mean, it's not fantastic. They don't have a first round pick. We know that. There's, they have a second round, they've got a third round, and they've got two fourth rounds. So they have their own fourth round, and then they have the fourth round that came in from the Jets during the Jamal Adams trade. They've got a fifth round, and they've got a seventh round. So when I say it's not great, I mean, they do still have a lot of picks left, and they really didn't participate in the you know, leading up to the NFL trade deadline this year. So they saved their picks. Obviously, their first round is gone, and we'll talk about that more in this video. But that's just some clarity on where Seattle is right now. So I'm going to give you my first guy that I'll just start by saying it's not very realistic, but I would love Evan Neal from Alabama to join this Seahawks offensive line. He is arguably the top offensive line prospect in this year's draft class. He's a former five-star prospect, has a massive frame, and he moves really well for his size. Like I said, he's, he's good size, he's athletic, and his future is unclear. The, I mean, the Seahawks' future is unclear with Dwayne Brown at left tackle. I mean, if the Seahawks could get Evan Neal, this would be incredible but it's just not likely after you know him being around after the first round i think that in reality the seahawks you know if you don't remember the reason why we don't have a first round pick is because they gave up jamal adams earlier and if you don't remember that deal in return the jets got a 2021 first round pick a 2021 third round pick a 2022 first round pick they got safely bradley mcdougall and the jets also gave up adams and then they gave up that fourth round pick that we talked about earlier so yes i would love evan neal to come to seattle but i think he's going to be long gone before the second round so i ask you guys this now would you still do the Jamal Jamal Adams trade if it were happening today based on 
what his performance has been. Do you think that it was worth it? Type Y for yes or type N for no. You know, I'm actually going to say that I think it was worth it. And I know, as we've said many times, Jamal Adams has struggled a bit this season, but he's a great player. He's a great safety. I think that the Seahawks did make the right choice there. Obviously, they are paying him a lot of money, though. Um, I think the Seahawks will figure out the offensive line area. And another thing that you guys need to figure out is when you're betting, who are you betting with? Because there's a lot of places out there, but BetUS is our favorite one here at Chat Sports, and they've got their great deal going on right now. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use promo code Seahawks125, use, you'll get 125% deposit bonus. So you put up 100 bucks, turns into 225 And as we're talking college football, maybe you want to bet on that. You don't have to bet on the NFL. You can bet on whatever you'd like. And for this week, we are still going to give uh, keep our jersey giveaway going on. If you don't know what that is, that means if you are new to BetUS, just prove it to us. Sign up, use the promo code, deposit the money, place a bet on any game, and we will send you over a free Seahawks jersey. It is that simple. You just have to email us at jersey at chatsports.com. We've got DK Metcalf still. We've got Russell Wilson, and I think we still have a couple Jamal Adams left. But I'm telling you, you do not want to miss out on this. That's why we even started the video telling you about it, because we do not have a lot of jerseys left. So now is the time. Get your Seahawks jersey and go check out the deal from BetUS. Now let's move on to a little bit more realistic draft targets for the Seahawks. The first one being an edge rusher. Out of Cincinnati, we've got Majay Sanders. He was rated by PFF as one of the top edge defenders in college football this season. He had 10 and a half tackles for loss and seven sacks in 2020. He's had 23 tackles in 2021 so far and he's had two sacks so i really like sanders i mean he's a speed rusher with great length he's very athletic and so far i mean i really like what we're seeing out of him in 2020 we'll take a look at what he did as i mentioned 10 and a half tackles for loss seven sacks but he had 31 tackles as a whole and five pass breakups now i'm not saying that i have no faith in the seahawks defense or in their defensive line specifically but i am saying that this is an area that i think they could improve upon as we look ahead into the 2022 draft i think you know puna ford has struggled a bit i think Kerry Hyder has been on and off obviously carlos dunlap we've had back and forth with so we're seeing improvement. Rasheem Green, another one, obviously. But I think we're seeing improvement. But at the same time, this is a position that I think the Seahawks could benefit from. And a guy like Sanders is someone that I really like as we look ahead. And now this could obviously change. As we said, we're doing this a little bit early. But that is my edge pick for the Seattle Seahawks as it stands right now. Next up, we're talking cornerbacks. Now, I told you I'm not super down on the cornerbacks that the Seahawks have right now, but this is Travius Hodges Tomlinson. Tomlinson sounds familiar to you. That is because he is the nephew of Ladanian Tomlinson. So he's got some good NFL ties in his family. He's had 35 tackles so far this season, two interceptions and four pass deflections. And in 2020, he was a PFF first team All-American. So I like Tomlinson. I think he's a guy that, I mean, the TCU has really liked him. They've played him a lot and early on when he was young. And I know what you guys are probably thinking right now. You might be giving up on TCU as a whole with LJ Collier and the way that that worked out. But guys, we are not going to group in schools and just blame it on TCU. Let's not give up on their prospects because he is a guy that I really like. And he's a guy that I think he's a junior right now, but I genuinely think he is going to be in this NFL draft with the way that TCU has been performing this year. Now, obviously, as we look at this cornerback room, DJ Reed, I said, has been improving and Trey Brown. He's just a rookie. I think he's only going to get better and better. I don't see Sidney Jones having much of a role in Seattle next year. That's just my early opinion. And we haven't seen much out of Bless Austin. So I like the idea of Seahawks drafting a corner, but I am feeling somewhat encouraged by the improvement that we've seen in this room. 
Now, we are a little bit away from the draft, so in between now and then, there is going to be a lot of Seahawks news and rumors and, you know, current game situation videos we are going to have up. So if you are not already, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel. These videos are free and they'll stay free. So we ask you here, please help us out. Go to youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Press that big red button. Turn on the notifications. Be the first to know what's going on in Seahawks news. Let's move on to the offensive line. If we're talking, you know, about Evan Neal not being available, I think another guy in the offensive line category is Zion Zion Johnson. He's coming out of Boston College. He's a top 50 prospect on the offensive line. I think there's a chance he even goes late in the first round. He's former Davidson transfer. It's He's really strong for his size. And He's got a mean streak, which is funny. People say that a lot about him. But Seattle needs to keep adding, you know, starting caliber players to protect Russ. It was obviously a major problem this offseason, and it was one of the reasons that we thought Russ was maybe not going to land back in Seattle this year. And, you know, we kind of thought that Shane Waldron and Russell Wilson, they figured it out a little bit together. But the truth is they're still struggling, and we saw that obviously this past week in that game against the the Packers, but Dwayne Brown, his future is questionable. I'd say Damian Lewis is, you know, he's okay. Ethan Postick, I do like, I think that he's doing pretty well. Gabe Jackson is really good. I'd say he's probably the best guy on this offensive line. Brandon Shell, though, I mean, it's, they're still struggling. And so I wish that we were at a place where the Seahawks solved that problem coming into this season. But truth is, I don't think they have yet. Maybe we see a great improvement as the season goes on but if we do not i like a guy like zion johnson joining this team all right next guy we have for you and don't get mad at me when we talk running backs but we are talking kenneth walker the third he is the leading rusher in yards and yards per game this year he's a former wake forest backup and he has honestly just exploded onto the scene he's a guy that might not you know, be around long though. So that's the one thing I'd say about him because the Seahawks, I think in order to actually get a guy like Kenneth Walker, they'd have to use at most, they'd have to use their second round pick and that's if he's still around by then. So I don't know if it's a big enough need to use it on a top running back prospect, but Chris Carson might not be on the team next year. As we said, we don't know what his status is going to be with that lingering neck issue. And I know it didn't work out well with Rashad Penny, but maybe you reassess. Again, it really depends on where he ends up, but he's very impressive. 228 carries. It's a lot of carries. So far in 2021, he's had 1,483 yards. He averages about 6.5. He's already had 17 touchdowns this year. So, I mean, he's an insane player. He's really good, and that's why... I wouldn't say that it's the most realistic option for Seattle because, A, I don't even know if he's going to be around in the second round. And if he is, I don't know if they should be using their second round pick on a running back. But these are the guys that I'm bringing up. This is early on. These are just, you know, as we look a little bit into the new year and we start thinking this way, Evan Neal would be fantastic. I don't know how realistic that is. My Jay Sanders, I think he is realistic and I like him a lot. Uh, Travis Hodges Tomlinson, don't give up on TCU yet. He's a cornerback there. I like him. Zion Johnson, offensive line help. And then lastly, like we just said, Kenneth Walker. But it is your turn now. Those are just some of the guys that I've thought about recently. Name me a prospect that we should watch out for as we get a little bit closer to the 2022 draft. Leave your votes in the comments.